Melinda Rabine and my role. It's been um, writer, director. I'm having a co-director, Tony Dupay. Thank you, Tony. Wish you were here today. Um, and co-producers with Alder and Tim. And then I will actually be playing the lead character, Melinda Rabine. And I'm a writer, a co-director, and co-producer on this. It's a heavy story. It looks at um, one woman's journey, struggle, to overcome mental illness brought on by domestic violence. It is, in fact, um, all entirely fictional, but it was inspired through my own personal experiences, and it ended up putting the story together. I think it impacts us more than we really realize because of the fact we're just starting to look at it. Um, I think when we say the word mental illness, domestic violence, we think of the greatest horrible situation. Um, the person who doesn't seem to be here anymore in their shell of their self, but in actuality, it's also someone with anxiety or, you know, um, flashes of moments of um, post-traumatic stress. It's uh, not necessarily always the, the severest thing. And then for domestic violence, it's also, I think, an important thing as we look at that, yes, it does encompass um, rape, it does encompass um, causing sexual harm or physical harm, but there's also the mental and psychological aspects of domestic violence. And I think we are now starting to become more aware of really what that encompasses and then really what the effects are. And I feel like our society is starting to wake up. And um, I hope through this story, it will give people greater compassion for those who are going through tough times or traumas, but also for those who are going through trauma, it would, I would hope that it would speak to them and say, yes, you, it, that's my voice out there. That's my story. You get me. I'm not, I'm not invisible. You can see me and you feel what I'm going through. So that's like, yeah, really what my greatest hope is, is to give voices to those who may not get the opportunity to speak. I've always believed the media is, has such a big impact in society. And we go to theater to get away, right, in some ways. And I feel a great story, no matter what the story is, it affects your heart. And that means it can make you laugh, it can make you angry, it can make you upset, but it should also make you think. And that is my hope, is that this film brings people together and connects them um, by their hearts, but then also then take it further and um, what can I do? The story is inspired by true events. So there were events that happened to me, not like how I put the story together. They happened in different ways. And I just came up with this concept of a woman, because I, I'm writing for what I know, of going through this experience, and I, I had to take for myself what was my process of healing and what did it look like. And for me, um, one of the biggest things to overcome and to learn to start doing again is trusting. And that's really scary from someone who's been through a lot. I think anybody who's, anybody who's gone through trauma, you have this hesitation to trust again, but yet you have to trust again in order to go forward. And I had to trust myself that I had a good story. And then from there, I had to trust to open up to people, to tell them my stories, or the story, and to be vulnerable. But um, I believe when you start working and healing yourself, you automatically start to meet people and bring people that are like, like yourself. And I did that, and it was, Little by little, more and more people came to making this project a reality. It was the belief in believing in my story and what I had to say and their belief in it that kept me going. And then from there, I met other people who had trauma much greater than mine, 
who said, oh, thank you, and I, I, I get what you're doing, and I want to help you. And from them believing in me, it gave me a conviction to keep going forward. I, I can't explain it. It's unreal. I feel like I'm living in a dream right now. You know, I have done so much work on myself, and I really, really, really do believe, and I am hopefully a testament to other people that there is no dream too big, too great, that you cannot accomplish. But first and foremost, you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to love yourself. Because by loving yourself, you know really where are those boundaries that you need to set with certain people, but then you also giving yourself self-love, you welcome other people who are in that healthy environment to come into your life. And I, I just this journey has shown that to me. I mean, this has been up on Facebook, but not a few days, and we're almost at a 500 hits. I'm blown away. I'm blown away by the support. I'm blown away that every time I ask someone, will you please, fingers crossed, inside shaking, heart racing, I'm sweating all over, will you be willing to do this project with me and hands down it's yes and I'm like I just want you to know right now we're still working on budget and still securing funding and I didn't get my two grants <laughs> so will you trust me that we're going to be able to go forward and they're not a problem no hesitation let's make it happen I think today we have over 10 people making this a reality today and that's not including the interviewees Asylum is based on my personal experience. Though asylum is entirely fictional, it came from a place that I personally knew um, specific things that had happened to me, and I pulled it together and made this story of this woman who is going through her own trauma in her mind and in her head, and to the fact that it's so heavy, she can't get out of it. and. There's moments where you can see that she wants to, but she doesn't know how to. And then from there, I had to be willing to open myself up and share this idea. And I was so nervous, I was so afraid, I was so scared, and um, I think I waited almost a year to really get the guts. I would start briefly talking to people about it, but not really going into too much detail. And it took me about a year to get the guts to start talking to some people. And um, really, really nervous, sent it to someone to look at who I highly respect in the film industry. And she's very much involved in film. And um, she read it. And I was really nervous because I didn't get a response for a few days. And she messaged me and texted me and said, award-winning. And I was like, are you OK? I can, I, I, can, I can continue and move forward. And it's been that way, this whole process. And every time I tell someone about it, and I'm so nervous, and I'm shaking, and if you could see my insides, you would think there was an earthquake going on, because there's just so much nerves. And to put myself out there and to ask for help is huge for me. But every time I do, it, 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 never once has someone said no, and they always have said yes. And someone told me, while I was very nervous, said, you need to do this, and you need to go forward with it. And if it's right, the doors will continue to open. And we put this live on Facebook, but a few days ago, and we're almost at 500 hits, so I, I feel like I'm on the right path and just more and more beautiful people come into the project. And I'm blown away, overwhelmed. I would ask you to look in yourself and to believe that you deserve so much more. And as hard as it is to step away, and as hard as it is to say, I love myself, you have to do it for yourself and to move forward because there is something so much more better for you, so much greener for you amongst your, the fog that you live in and the hell that you live in. I promise that there's something way better and you deserve so much more. You need to ask yourself, is this it for me? No, it's not it. There's so much more for you and yourself. 
But in order to get to that more, in order to get to those better things, you have to first say, I am worth it, that I deserve love. And that love first has to come from you, nobody else. Because people are going to love you the way you tell them to love you. And I'll tell you that from my own personal experience. And you start loving yourself, and you start saying, I am worth it. And you start setting those boundaries. And those people who have hurt you, I promise you, will start stepping away because they will realize that you are no longer going to allow them in your own personal space. And the other people who have loved themselves and have gone through their own experience, you will start to meet them. And you'll start to bond with other people who are in a better spot, in a healthier spot, and can help you get through to the other, to that beautiful green pastures or the, the flower meadows or the white sandy beaches. I promise you it is out there and it is and you deserve nothing but the best like everybody else and if a movie a film is done correctly I don't care how short or how long it is it's going to affect your heart and when it affects your heart it is going to start uh, starting to affect your mind and your process and your thinking and it could be light comedy and humor and it makes you laugh or it could be something that really gives you conviction to move forward or want to do something or want to do something better for yourself or other people. And that's great storytelling. And through great storytelling, you, the person will leave that theater changed in some way, some shape or form. And that is what my hope that Asylum will do is that when people watch it, it is a heavier story, but they're invited in into someone's personal journey. And through that person's personal journey, I hope it speaks to their hearts in such a way that they won't forget it and they will remember that we all are going through something and be gentle with ourselves and be gentle with one another and how we treat each other and how we talk to one another. The grace we want, we need to also be able to give other people. And I hope with Asylum that we will start giving ourselves grace and other people grace. So I thought I was doing the great, you know, job as being that person who's creating this idea, and I went out and I went after grants, grants that I thought, of course they're going to support this. Not only is it the arts, it's talking about social issues and what's combining two topics together that people are just now starting to realize. Um, mental illness, there's a correlation with that, with do domestic violence. And I, I thought, how could you, these grants not want to support this great story of a woman's coming to realizing how she needs to learn to trust again? Unfortunately, I didn't get the grants. But by then, I had already started telling people about this project. And so I have a group of people that's already still on board, and they have right now done nothing but volunteer their time, pro bono their time, for this. And so every person who donates, gives money to Asylum, is bringing Asylum alive and telling the story of hope through um, trauma, that there is hope even while you are in the midst of your nightmare, that there is something else out there for you. And every person who donates is going to bring that story alive. I can't do this project without your dollar, so-and-so's dollar, et cetera, et cetera. They're going to become a part of this project. As any other crowdfunding or crowdsourcing, like any other crowdsourcing, there is a promo video. And it goes live, and it talks about what this project is about. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to allow um, people to tell their truth, to tell their trauma, to tell their journey and the process of getting over it. I wanted their voices to bring asylum alive. It is by their story that asylum has a voice. And I am so humbled by the response. Not one person turned me down and from there, they said, what else can I do? And they thanked me when, when I'm the one, give me a moment, 
when I'm the one saying thank you because you're bringing my story alive. You're giving me a voice. You're giving me a voice when so many times I didn't have a voice or I didn't feel like my voice was important. And that says a lot to me. I cannot tell you the gratitude that I feel. I hope the camera captures it. And I hope that every person that watches it is drawn to be a part of this project. That means share it. That means if it's a dollar you can give, then that's beautiful. And if it's a thousand dollars you can give, that is just as beautiful. Every person has an effect, has an effect in how our society could be. And every person also has an effect in how asylum's able to get made. And I hope through their s stories, it hopefully they feel that they had an impact in creating asylum, which they did heavily. Thank you very much. Um, I am very, very, very fortunate. Um, the people that are on board with me with asylum, um, they have gone through their own personal experience. And um, from the producers to the cinematographer to the PA and to the actors, they get it and they understand it. It's a heavy story, but it's a beautiful story. And it, if done right, it will flow and read like a poem as if you are going along to someone else's journey. Every, like I said, every time I've told someone about the project, not even expecting to receive anything, it's just, this is where I'm at. Um, and I've had doors open. I have a former boss, excuse me, I have a former boss who is a vice president of a very large retail or, um, corporation here in the Northwest, and she opened her house, which is a beautiful mansion, and we were going to film part of Asylum there. We also have a location in um, Tacoma, and they've opened their space to film the mental institution, and um, this script has evolved through continuous advisors on this project who understood the story, who didn't want to change the story, but wanted for me to tell it in the most strong and most impactful way possible. And I think that speaks to everybody that's on this crew. It's like they want to tell the story in the most impactful, beautiful way possible. So, yeah, I am honored. Thanks, you all. Okay.